I have some basic tips and tricks on how to start out in Zombies in Spaceland and how to survive a decent amount of time as you start off in the game. A really good starting point is to check out your fate and fortune cards and familiarize yourself with what they can do and the different benefits that they can grant you while playing the game. So this is my basic setup here, I have scorching skin, I have static shock, I have a few other really interesting ones like maid party, manor up and blood clot. Now you can switch and change between these prior to starting the game, uh, I would highly recommend checking out the fortune cards whenever you unlock packs along the way and then you can fully customize your weapons, even your starting pistol which is really handy to pack a punch, uh, the shotgun which is one of the first weapons that you will stumble across after unlocking the first door is a great starting point. I would highly recommend checking out the shotgun, it lasts for multiple rounds, I would say I'd probably get up to around wave 10 or 11 comfortably and then after that point you'd probably have to pack a punch uh, but the site I would recommend is the smart shot it will automatically lock onto zombies close by and it will lock onto their vital organs and blow them away that is super handy uh, in the later rounds you will create a few more crawlers so be careful um, but obviously with a shotgun you want to have stability you want to have great accuracy when it comes to hip firing so aim towards that style in the first area I would highly recommend checking out the M1 it is a bolt action rifle, make sure you go for headshots, you can make that thing last up to around wave 7 I would say comfortably, it's really handy against clowns as well and it's great if you pack a punch it, um, but basically this is up to personal preference, go through all of the attachments and all of the different sites and try to figure out something that works for you. Another cool thing that I found in the menus is a little kind of hidden glitch I guess, if you go into a custom game and you set up your camouflages for all of your unique weapons and then you go into a public game, it will actually transfer that data to a public game. So you can customize your weapon entirely with really cool skins and then you can go online and it will basically allow you to use them somehow. I don't know whether that was intended or not, but that was something I found just from playing through the menu, so definitely make sure to do that. Anyway guys, let's get into the gameplay now. So after the small intro and after it shows you what Fate and Fortune cards you have selected, I would recommend going off to the left hand side to activate the power generator. After doing that, you can check out the area here you have the hailstorm which is a burst pistol and then you have the m1 which is a bolt action rifle now this is the rifle that i would highly recommend go for headshots you will pop headshots constantly for the first couple of rounds you will rack up points and it's super satisfying as well um, so as you can see here you just nail the headshots and just kind of hold yourself as long as you can now if you've got a decent team here you will hold this area for minimum five six rounds uh, you can even survive the clowns in this little area here some people try to unlock and move as far forward as they can um, but it's great to hold this area here accumulate some coins or some dollar dollar bills y'all and then you move on to the next area we have unlocked the next area and you can see i've got the hailstorm here i've got akimbo so i've got dual wield and it's quite a handy little gun i don't like it too much i i liked it at first when i started the game but now it's kind of losing its appeal to me uh, the shotgun was on the wall there as you come over the bridge. The souvenir station is straight ahead. You also have the portal straight ahead which you have to activate uh, to get through to pack a punch. You have to activate four different portals throughout the map. You have two off to the left in Journey into Space. You have one off to the right in Kepler and then straight down the back at Polar Peak you have another one. So you activate all of them in whatever order you want, no time limit, and then you can activate the pack a punch. So for the first couple of rounds, like I said, probably six or seven rounds you'll be comfortable in this area here. Uh, the first two areas are pretty easy to hold. It will start getting progressively more and more hectic so kind of just figure out your area I guess and try to get yourself used to what's going on and the flow of the game here. Um, if you've got a decent team obviously you make sure you communicate and you figure out what area you want to go to first but you have three areas to choose from and you can donate in each area as much as you want. It's $4,000 to get through each zone um, but basically you donate to figure out which way you want to go. Your teammates will figure it out. You don't even have to have a mic. You basically just put in money and figure it out from there. So this is very easy, like I said, go for headshots, hold as long as you can. Uh, near the back where Polar Peak is, you will find a head of a robot and the robot's name is Neil. So you grab that and then put it on Neil and he will be closer to the bridge that you stumble across um, after unlocking the first area. So after you've done that, he will give you some missions to do. If you complete all the missions and then go up to him and activate him, he will get sent off into space and David Hasselhoff will come down and help you out. So that's a really cool little Easter egg 
grenade that you can start off with. Uh, the shotgun, again, which I just picked up then, is a really handy starting weapon. The shotgun and the M1 is normally what I go for when I start out in this game. Um, and then I like to go to the left-hand side first in Journey Into Space. In there, you've got some really cool weapons. You've got the arcade machine. Uh, you've also got Jug in there, Juggernog, which is extremely handy in the later rounds. Uh, you also have Mule Munchies, so you can hold three weapons instead of two. You've got the AK-47 or the Volk, which is a really handy assault rifle and some other really cool areas in there. So that's the first room that I seem to unlock. Kepler off to the right is another really handy room. You have some traps in there. And that's another thing. This is a, uh, a space land, you know, so this is a theme park. So you've got heaps of different rides, heaps of different traps, and you use them to your advantage. You go around and you kind of figure out the best way to train zombies in a zone so that you can kill as many as you can in the one hit. So that's something that you'll get to later on in the game when it starts getting a little bit more hectic. Um, but for now, you kind of just hold and you just figure out your zones. Okay, so we've comfortably made it to round 11. Everything's going well. I haven't really done anything drastically different from what I was doing before, just basically holding my ground and going from there. But I'm in Journey Into Space here, which is the one off to the left. I just ran past the Volk there, which is my favorite assault rifle. If you keep running, you'll see I pick up Tough Nuff, which is Juggernog, basically. So this will allow you to take more hits than usual. And this is a godsend when it comes to the later rounds. This is something that you definitely need, guys. Um, so after you've killed a few more, I normally hold off and try to get the Volk. Um, and then you've got Mule Munchies down there in that little alleyway off to the right. You've got another souvenir machine right there, which you can chuck some souvenirs in and unlock some really cool gadgets. Uh, this area here is really good to train them around. It's quite open and there's a corridor that you can run around. Uh, the portal there off to the left, you can see we've activated two of the portals. Um, we've also unlocked Kepler. And up here, there's a few really cool traps. But after you figure out the map and how the game flows, then you'll start picking everything up really quickly. And especially if you're playing online with people that you don't know, then definitely put your microphone on. People seem to be very helpful in this game. Everyone's trying to figure out all the hidden gems and all the random things that you can unlock throughout zombies. So it's normally a really great community, guys. So definitely don't be afraid to talk to people. There are a lot of different things to unlock, guys. And it would be the most intense video to make, which there are videos on YouTube if you want to see all the different hidden Easter eggs and unlocks along the way. Um, but for this video here, I just wanted to show you guys the basics. I want to show you guys what I've been doing and how to basically survive for a decent amount of time without having issues. So we're up to wave 11 and in this game here we made it to I think wave 20 comfortably. Started getting a little bit hard there and then a few people left but overall it's one of those games that you just kind of play over and over again trial and error until you figure out how everything flows and then it will become second nature to you and you can start looking for all of the hidden gems and easter eggs throughout this game here. Anyway guys thank you so much for watching I really do appreciate all of your support. Make sure to have a fabulous day and peace out.